Hello everybody, it's Diane. It's a Saturday. Um, I went to work and came home and ready to do a little crafting. I'm making a small journal, just one, not a pair. And this is from a little journal kit that I got called Victorian Parlor and it's from Screech Owl Studios. And the size of the sheets are small. I can't give you the exact measurements because I did trim them a little bit to fit into this cover. But let me see what I, sorry, what I ended up with is a page that's four by six and a half. So it's just a little bit bigger than that. Because I did I trimmed off this edge. I don't think I trimmed off the height. Um, I had printed and cut this a long time ago and I had selected this gorgeous embossed book cover. It's a vintage book and I can actually tell you how old it is. Here is the inscription that was in it. I mounted it onto some cardstock. 1901. And I just love that embossed pattern. And look at the pretty end paper. So it's a gorgeous little book. I think, I thought that the papers would fit into this book and I had, like I said, I had the papers all printed and cut apart and all the little tags and things were cut out and I had them in a bag with this book because I guess I thought they were going to fit. And then as I started assembling the pages, I realized that the pages were sticking out a little too far, so I had to trim them. So I did work on a lot of it yesterday. I um, just started putting stuff in it. And so without going spending too much time going over what I've already done, I am just going to add a little bit of fabric. They're little pages, so <coughs> excuse me. I don't want to do large fabric flips but I have some strips of fabric that I thought would be fun to just make little fabric flippy things. I guess they're fabric flips, but they're just, they're made out of strips instead of bigger pieces of fabric. Maybe I want something blue here, but I don't know if I have a blue fabric strip. Oh, that's pretty. That might work. I got all kinds of fabric strips here. Even a don't know if that would be too bright for this Victorian theme, but okay. I've got plenty to work with, that's for sure. I'll just add a little piece of this green. I think I'm going to cut this one in a fishtail shape. This feels like a starched, it's not starched, but it's a heavy piece of fabric. I think somebody must have sent that to me. I don't remember buying it, and I love it. I want to hoard it, but I'm going to use it. And I will put a little bit of lace at the top. Pretty, I like that. I'll do one in this book. 
for this signature. It's kind of nice to only do one journal instead of working on multiples. Guess I'll use this piece. I guess that's not too bright. Can't tear it if I want it done at an angle, can I? So I have a band-aid on my finger. In a previous video I mentioned that I had cut the tip of my finger with my orange peeler thing from Tupperware little sharp little thingies. It took a little <laughs> divot out of my finger and it was very sore for days and it's finally feeling better. So yet last night I was I went to cut a grapefruit in half and the knife slipped, big big knife slipped and went into my finger. I just thanked God it could have been so much worse because I was being careless and it could have been a bad cut and it wasn't. It bled a lot, but the same finger. <laughs> it bled a lot, but it's, it's fine. It's going to heal. It's not even very painful at this point. It didn't even hurt last night. Um, it started to hurt later, but I mean, I'm trying to see if I want anything else on here. I don't want to cover this with lace, but maybe a little bit of something over here. So I have determined the only conclusion to come to from this is fruit is bad for you, is dangerous. Because I hurt myself peeling an orange and I hurt myself cutting a grapefruit. Just just kidding. I know fruit is not dangerous. It's just being careless that's dangerous. And I will learn my lesson from that for sure. I like that. Some of these fabric strips that I have are from Ooh La La Crafts and some are from um, Denise. What's her shop? Goodness, I know her shop. Tattered, tattered dream. And some are ones that I, from fabrics that I bought. What kind of paper did I use here? This is supposed to be here. Okay. This is one from a vintage fabric that I bought, and I cut it into strips. I thought it was so pretty. I cut such a big, a big piece of this because I wanted that big rose. I love the vintage look of this.
This um, book that I'm using, the vintage book cover, is actually from a novel called Rose, but it was uh, the girl's name. It's from a series of books I read in the introductory information in the book that it's from a series and I believe it's like a character building series for kids, for young people. <coughs> Let me just show you. It's a juvenile book entitled Ministering, Ministering Children. So the, the titles were Herbert or True Charity. Rose, or The Little Comforter, that's the subtitle of this book, Patience, or The Sunshine of the Heart, and Ruth, Ruth and Little Jane, or Blossoms of Grace. So this one is Rose, or The Little Comforter. I thought that was interesting. And um, this kit even comes with a book plate, so I can use that on the inside cover. I think this is still a little longer than I want. This is a piece of a snippet roll that my friend Catherine, who I actually met, she lives pretty close to me, and we met at the Tioga Downs. That's where I go to the flea market, but we didn't meet at the flea market part. We met at the, there's a casino there, and we met at the restaurant, the buffet there. So I just took a little piece of her snippet roll and added it there. That looks pretty. Anyway, she she brought me some goodies. I brought her some goodies, and um, that was one of them. She made that snippet roll. So thanks, Catherine. I'm using your snippet roll. Hopefully, we can meet again up there when the maybe when the flea market is open. But I really like the buffet there. So hey, let's do lunch again, Catherine. I thought it was really expensive to eat at the buffet because I went with my family. I took my kids there. This is kind of crooked, but that's okay. Um, I treated my kids there one day, one Sunday, and it was expensive. But that one's done. It goes in here. On Saturday, it wasn't expensive. I think it was $10.00. So it must, the price must go up on Sunday. They probably have better carved meats or something on Sunday. So I'll just have to take myself there on a Saturday, whether I'm meeting Catherine or not. All right, so I got those done. Let's see what else I can add fabric-wise while I'm over here. I like this little... I've got this thin one and this thin one, so maybe I can do something with those. I put this on upside down, so this is upside down. I don't know if I'll cover the page or just cover this part with the words because, you know, the flower is okay. It's just, it looks better there, but I don't know what I'll do. These things I do, making mistakes. I think I'll just ruffle this fabric up right here. It's the same page that has the flip on it. I think all I have to do is um, finish this fabric stuff and then stamp. I just want to do a little bit of stamping, not much, because I because the pages are small and I don't want to take up too much of the space with stamps. 
but I have a couple decorative stamps I'd like to use. All right, so I use the rose. This one, let's put them in the order I want them in. These are illustrations from the book. I'll put this one first. They're not the order that they go in in the book, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so which one did I just do? All right, so I'm gonna put the rose on the first and the second signature, and then the stripe will go in the middle. It's a little thicker than I want it to be. That one's thin enough. I can do three different ones. This was also one that I purchased. This one wasn't at a flea market. It was in the clearance fabrics at uh, Joann's. Sometimes you can find some good prices at Joann's. Usually they're pretty expensive, but the clearance fabrics can be nice. making this a bit chunky but I don't want the spine to be bigger than two inches because it is such a small book I don't want to make it too fat I would would have preferred to do an inch and a half but I can't do that without giving it alligator mouth I'll see I think it's gonna have to be two inches and then it still might have a little alligator mouth putting it way up at the top, it's not going to cover the whole length. That's okay. Okay, now I'm just going to do some stamping. I'll just move these things out of the way. I already got some stamps and ink out. thought I would use my early espresso from Stampin' Up, but it's um, it's not as dark as the stays on brown that I usually use, and this is old, so I hope it's going to be dark enough, actually. I was able to actually use some of the tags that I made in my Somerset-inspired video the other day, so I was happy to be able to do that. So I just have some decorative stamps, little flourishes and things like that. And it's quite pale and it's crooked because it's crooked on my block. So it's subtle.
I brought a corner stamp over. Really pretty. It's an Anna Griffin stamp. I liked it when Michaels used to carry Anna Griffin stamps. I think she's on HSN. I don't think it's QVC. I don't watch either of them, but I've seen that she's been on HSN, I think it is, selling not just stamps, but scrapbooking kits and card kits and things like that. Her papers are gorgeous. page I guess maybe this page this one is from an inexpensive set I got long 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 time ago it was a box set and I had to cut the rubber and put it on the blocks. I remember it was something about it that was really hard to do. I don't remember if it was peeling it or I don't remember, but I had a hard time putting these stamps together and I do it all the time with Stampin' Up! stamps. But it came with that and that and those. And I used, I used to use them a lot. So I did, it was very, very easy to go to the USPS, US Post Office website and schedule a pickup for all of those packages. I had, I ended up with eight packages to send, four of them being the, the heavy ones with the big D-stash, uh, three were fabric D-stash. They weren't heavy, but they're, you know, large, when you have that many boxes and you have good size boxes, it's really hard to juggle them and get them and get them into the post office. So I scheduled a pickup and it worked great. They, they just, my regular post office, uh, my regular delivery guy um, picked them up. I'm trying to see, I think this goes here. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just trying to match them up to what I have in the in the first signature. So I think I'll be using that option more. If I can when I move. Was that all? I think that's all I did.
And then I, after I had scheduled the pickup, it was for seven boxes. And then I sold the journal that I had reserved for a customer. And so I just went in and updated it so that it would be a pickup of eight packages. So it was really easy. Wish I had done it sooner. I think this one is an Anna Griffin stamp too, this corner one. No, I guess it's not. <clears throat> Hers have that sepia color. But this is from a set that I got at a craft store sometime. that I did. This one. Okay. That's done. Oops. Just, just stuck my fingers in the ink. Now I have these three cards, whoops, these three cards left over, so I'm wondering what I want to do with those cards. I don't really want to tuck it in here. I think what I'll do here is tuck in a scrap of my paper that you can write on. Yeah, I like that better than having this and then this together like that. Am I weird? I'm getting my punch. do with this is I think I want to emboss it with my big shot and then maybe glue a paper on the back that you can write on because I think it would be hard to write on the embossed cardstock but I like <clears throat> the look of embossed so <clears throat> excuse me I'm going to do that there so sorry. Put that in there, so I don't really want to put one there. Or do I? I might as well, right? I've got three cards. Let's see if I could put one somewhere else.
I was wondering about making another pocket somewhere, but I think I just want to leave a lot of pages for you to write on. So that will make it easy. Just put another one in the doily. This looks like some kind of thread work on this paper. And it's already got one of those pages in this signature, so I'm going to switch this. Oh yeah, didn't do the card in here yet. See if there's anything else I need to use. Um, I think that I will, this will go on the front and there isn't enough room to put a pocket here. I don't want to cover that, so I'll put a pocket on the back and tuck this in the back. This is the paper, the uh, pattern paper that was a white on white design, and so when I coffee dyed it, it was hard to see the design, but it's there. I think I might do something to make this a little more decorative since <clears throat> it's hard to see that pattern. So hang on a bit. I'm going to go grab something. See what we can put on one of these. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. Coffee dyed paper is crinkly, so I make sure I press the glued thing down onto it. Make sure it all adheres. That makes it much prettier. a pretty little picture. Looks Victorian era.
need something behind it though. I should have these journals ready to go in my shop um, if I can get the covers done today and I make the video I can put these in my shop Monday or Tuesday but I'll let you know when I do the video the flip through video But I was, you know, um, going through things and packing what I can pack and found this. And I thought, I might as well just make it. It shouldn't take two of them. If I just do one instead of two. I think I'm going to ink around that edge. reason it just looks better. here and see what I might have. She definitely looks Victorian, but I don't uh, I don't think it has enough color. Okay. We'll go with this one and I think I'll put a little lace behind her. I haven't been to my craft store since well before Christmas. And I got a Hobby Lobby gift card for Christmas. But I just don't want to take time away from my preparations for moving. And 
I'm either, um, well, working and watching kids and stuff I do for church. If I'm not doing that stuff, I'm packing or working on stuff for my shop, whether it's de-stash or crafting. So I don't want to take time away. I haven't visited my parents either. I need to do that. Talk to my mom on the phone, but I haven't visited. And they only live a few minutes away. And obviously, you know, I don't need to buy more stuff at the craft stores, but um, i got to keep an eye on my adhesives. I was having so much trouble with my paper cutters, and I, well, this is just an extra one. I ended up just buying one, a Fiskars one at Walmart, and I'm not really happy with it. So I don't know if I'll keep it. But I saw somebody on Facebook, one of the Facebook groups, mentioned a precision, Fiskars precision or something, a self sharpening blade and I looked it up on Amazon or Walmart or something and I couldn't believe the price of it. I think the cheapest price was $71. And of course you don't have to replace blades but it, you'd go a long time before it paid for itself. You know. So I don't know. I guess I have to buy things for my move. Replacing large pieces of furniture with smaller pieces and I don't really want to spend extra money on crafty stuff So I think I Just have to emboss that tag and decorate it. However, I want to decorate it and make the spine for this and Sew it together and it's done. So that was a pretty quick project And uh, I thank you for watching, and I will be back when this is put together and I can show you the complete journal. Bye-bye.